champions. Who's it going to be this time? Well, there's another heat to find out. Federico Alrefai and Salim Hanna from Noah Montero and David Walter from Dion Gauda and Leo Robinson, Ricardo Ianello and Renaud Frankert, Mark Dubnitsky, Leon Zelenko, Bart Harrison and Augustin Bernier. Followed on row seven by Yevan David and Alexander Shetland, Caleb Garafor and Luca Fuccia, Nando Wachelbaumer and Sol de Colombres, Alberto Benitez Bajano and Ludwig Franson, Lenny Kiefer and Emil Gedrum. 22 drivers on track, eight laps to go through. This is the last qualifying race of the Academy Trophy for today. We're still going to have two more tomorrow morning on Sunday before setting up the grid. 36 drivers only attending this grid for the final. So it means that eight of them, unfortunately, uh, won't get a chance to uh, see it through uh, at the end of the weekend. So the tickets are, the, the, the prices are high. The tickets are golden, especially in the Academy Trophy, a bit like the racing suits of those youngsters and the chassis as well. Everybody has the same colors, as you can see. And here we go for the rolling start of this race. Arifai against Anna. So are we going to get to see a clean start straight off the bat? Nope, not this time. An additional formation lap is called as the drivers again just a little bit too eager as they get themselves into their two travel lines. You've got to stay uh, in your two corridors and you cannot deviate out of them. You have to be in a good, solid formation at a constant and slow speed. That is how it is written in the regulations and in the driver's briefings. You must approach the grid at a good order and at a constant oh, and slow speed. Out. Oh, contact on the formation lap. Two carts off. Uh, one of them recovering, one of them stopped. That is the five, no, two of them stopped. Two of them stopped. That is the 515 of Ludwig Franson. And I think the other one is the 507. Is that Lenny Kiefer? Lenny Kiefer is the other one. So Franson and Kiefer on the formation lap have clattered into each other. And that is Kiefer walking away from his cart. And the 515, a very frustrated Ludwig Franson, is out of his as well. Oh, such a disappointment indeed for those two youngsters. This is not something you want to see, especially on the, on a formation lab like this on the second attempt. I know that sometimes tensions are high and uh, there's the will to do well. And, uh, you know, that can happen. We've seen that happening uh, before. Not very often, fortunately, but this time around, this is two drivers lost. Well, that's one of the reasons they say do not overly excessive weaving because that is the kind of thing that can happen as a result. They come off the final turn, are we gonna get a good start this time? Yes, we do, and we're racing to the first corner. A big start to the inside line from Federico Arafaya. I think Salim Hanna is actually gonna get the move on the inside line to take him into turn two, which he does. The Colombian hits the front, and Salim Hanna has led the race early doors. Federico Arafaya straight back on the inside, tries to go with him, but they bounce over the curb, and that is actually Noah Montero leading. I thought it was uh, Salim Hanna, but it's not. It is the Portuguese, Noah Montero, and as they battle away for second place, they've actually given Montero some breathing space. Yeah, that was very tight indeed. In turn number three, it's so tight on the curb, and they're almost got coming together, but uh, fortunately, everybody uh, is going through that opening lap quite safely, uh, except for the two drivers, of course, coming together in the warm-up lap. That's un unfortunate, as we said. But uh, Noah Montero, great start in for the young Portuguese, the son of Thiago Montero, the former Formula, Formula 1 driver, of course. He did come across, let's have a look at the gaps. Uh, as uh, we're gonna have confirmation in just a moment of uh, the good performance of Montero, eight tenths of a second already on Dion Gouda, Federico Arafai. Uh, these are the two drivers on your screen battling for second place on the way to turn number three, where we could have seen the move happening, but Noah Montero was having none of it and closed the door as uh, Dion Gouda is doing right now in front of Federico Arafai. Fourth place for David Walter in front of Bat Harrison. Followed by Ricardo Agnello, Renault Franco is seven in front of Mark Dubinsky, Salim Hanna is nine, and Yevon David uh, climbing up three positions up to ten. So Salim Hanna actually having the worst of start and opening lap, losing seven positions from second to nine. Unfortunately for the young Colombian driver, second in the standings to Renault Franco. So quite surprisingly so far. We haven't seen the best of Salim Hanna and Renaud Franco, the contenders in Bakersdorf, still struggling to find their pace and climb through the fields. It actually gives uh, a wide open space for other contenders to shine. Noam Montero being the first one, as well as Ari Fai, the pole sitting yesterday's qualifying, and Diod Gondas just behind. Watch out for the move coming up, but still, oh, battle for four from further back. This is David Walter was trying his bit, but still, he couldn't make it. And that's Gauda getting into second. Gauda gets into second past Ari Fai, and we've got 
Walter, Harrison and Ianello all battling away for that fourth position spot. So Dion Gouda has got into second place. Up to fourth now comes David Walter. Harrison up the inside trying to get into fourth position. Gets alongside an investigation flag for Leon Zelenko elsewhere. But this is an amazing battle between Walter and Harrison as they duel away for fourth and fifth position, trying to give each other room. That is Ianenko and Dubnitsky. Dubnitsky is the one who ends up having to back down. Salim Hanna, by the way, is down into eighth position as Gauda and Al Rifai have teamed up. The Singaporean and the Emirati battling away together as Ricardo Ianello runs there with a warning flag as well. So his part in the battle clearly getting the wrath of the stewards. But as they battle away for fourth place, David Walter and Bart Harrison still very close together. But out in front and stretching away to the tune of 1.1 seconds now is Noah Montero. When Tiago was a kid, he used to be known as Flash or Thunder. It looks as though it's striking again as here comes Harrison back on the inside to defend from Dubnyk. Dunitsky, uh, Dunitsky trying to squeeze alongside Bart Harrison. Harrison defends, but Dunitsky gets the drop back on in the inside line. Harrison keeps his foot in, and he's going to try again as they duel away for position. Harrison gets back on terms, and it's really spat out a couple of drivers through the fray. Somehow, they've all been able to stay on the racetrack, pointing in the right direction. That was close. That was close. And in the meantime, we look at Renaud Franco. He went from seventh to fifth in the meantime in the process. A beautiful made from the championship lead in front of Bart Harrison Dubinsky. I fought for a second. And Salim Hanna, still eight, was able to make it through, but D not quite yet. Dubinsky got back through there on Harrison. And it looks like Ianello got through on Salim Hanna as well. So overtaking moves from both men. And it looks as though Yvan David is still battling there away again with Leon Zelenko. So some great duels all the way through this Academy Trophy field. It's hard to know which direction to look in. We're at half distance, and the only person who doesn't seem to be in any form of scrap at the moment is Noah Montero, who's just allowed the field to scrap amongst themselves as the Portuguese youngster is looking likely to take his biggest win on the international stage as Mark Dubnitsky picks up a warning flag. Let's have a look at the gaps. 1.1 seconds still between Juan Montero and those two young guys. Dion Goda and Federico Arifai still battling head to head. Arifai goes through on the inside in turn number one. Oh, oh, a spin on the main straight in front of us. A spin on the main straight right in front of us. That is Alberto Benitez. Pichinano. So uh, Alberto Benitez, the young man from Paraguay, has spun right in front of our position on the home straight. Not sure what caused that. But now we've got this battle. There is Alberto Benitez, and he is very unhappy indeed. So the young Paraguayan is out of this race. The battle still going on for second position as Al Rifai desperately tries to hang on here in front of Gauda. Watch out for David Walter. He's going to split them. So Walter gets into third position. Thought he could have a run there at Al Rafai. He's not able to. Gauda gets back on terms with him. Up into third place once more. Bring it on. Yeah, bring it on indeed as we're getting here. Check out Flat lap six uh, completed at number seven as uh, Montero has nothing to worry about. Uh, Federico Rafai in second for one tenth of a second. Dion Gord and David Walter. This is a great battle on your screen at the advantage at the moment of Al Rafai. But for how long? We've got and David oh. Walter charging through. Then there he goes through. Beautifully made run inside of turn number three. Uh, that is uh, Dion Gorda making up a position up to second. Arifai is going to have to go defensive because David Walter is just very much in chase as well of the same position, but beautifully made by Gorda. And watch out because René Franco might actually take advantage of the position and the situation. René Franco, we almost forgot about him, but he's coming across just behind, chasing the three drivers. Can we see a late move? Oh. And there he goes through. René Franco. Oh, contact. contact! And three carts gone together there. Oh, that's disastrous as three drivers are out on the spot. And I think one of them is Bart Harrison. So that is disastrous as they continue on in their way. Bart Harrison is off the road. Yvan David picks up a warning flag. And it's Federico Al Rifai along with David Walter. So Al Rifai, the original pole sitter, along with Bart Harrison and David Walter out of the race on the penultimate lap. But this man has just cantered away. Look at it, the, the recriminations are still raging as Bart Harrison vents his anger for second place. Gauda versus Franco, they're absolutely at it as they both get very greasy in the run through as Gauda goes off the road to take second. Jumping past both of them, that's Ianello. Ricardo Ianello, the home star, has got through in a second place. They're still banging wheels and that is a very ferocious end to the race for several drivers, but Noah Montero will take his first win on this level at an absolute dominant streak 
Montero in front of Ianello and Leon Zelenko comes out of nowhere to finish up third in front of Dion Gauda and Yvan David. Welcome back to the big show, Yvan. But Noah Montero, what a dominant win in the end. And you may think uh, in the back of your mind that because he's the son of an F1 driver, things get handed to him on a silver plate. That is completely not the case. He works so hard, does young Noah Montero. He is a great little athlete. He does so much hard work behind the scenes. His training regime is intense as you like, and he pushes so hard to gain more from himself. This is a big moment for young Noah Montero. The confidence rise that he will get from this is unquestionable and he totally, totally deserves this accolade. It looks like thunder really does strike twice. Thunder stroke indeed, but uh, what a race once again. It was from the youngster of the Academy Trophy battling tooth and nail until the very last corner. You know, as long as the chicken flag is not waved, a race is never finished. And the youngsters of the Academy have uh, caught that quite well. Noah Montero, winner for five seconds on the rest of the field, battling along. Ricardo Yanielo taking a second place from pretty much uh, nowhere. We didn't see that coming. Leo Zelenko as well, climbing seventh place up to third in front of Dion Gouda, who thought he was on his way to a second place, potentially, before uh, dropping in the uh, last two uh, corners. Then we have uh, Yevan David, a good recovery effort as well from the driver from Sri Lanka, up to fifth in front of Salim Hanna. Khaled Garafar, eight places gained as well. Seven, six places uh, collected for Alexander Skelchen up to eight in front of Renault Frankot. Lucas Flutscha running up the top ten from Leo Robinson, Augustin Dernier, Wando Wachelbaumer, Saul de Colombres in 14th place, followed by Emil Jadrum and Mark Dubinsky as well as David Walter, all classified despite the trouble they went through into the uh, last lap of the race. Uh,